Hello everyone, this is Chuck Carnivale, co-founder of FastGraphs, the Fundamentals Analyzer software tool. This video is all about establishing the relevance of the P-E ratio of 15, which represents an earnings yield of 6.67% as a fair standard for most companies trading on the various stock exchanges in the U.S. and Canada. The idea here is that it's a barometer, it's a measuring stick. And what I'm going to attempt to do, and I'm going to do it very quickly because I'm going to cover a lot of companies, I'm not recommending recommending any of the stocks that I'm showing you here necessarily, I should say. What I'm doing is I'm just trying to establish how a 15 PE ratio as a very profound and relevant valuation reference works in the real world with real companies historically. So I'm going to start out here with AbV and I'm going to essentially just make sure that you're clear on what I'm showing you here. What I really want you to focus on as I go through each of these examples is the orange line, which is you'll see listed here in the FastFacts box as a P-E ratio of 15. As I go through each company, notice how the price, which is the black line, the monthly closing stock price, tracks that fair value P-E of 15. And when it gets disconnected, if it gets above it, I want you to notice how it comes back into alignment. When it gets undervalued, it comes back into alignment. It gets overvalued, it comes back into alignment. And what I really want you to get out of this presentation, one thing and one thing only, is how the 15 P-E ratio, which represents a 6.67% earnings yield, which is, you know, in the ballpark of the average rate of return the stocks have historically delivered is a good valuation reference. And what I'm saying is if you come across the stock with a much higher P-E ratio, I personally don't believe it's worth the time or effort to research it. Instead, look for companies that have a P-E ratio of 15 or below. In the case of AbbV, we have a blended P-E ratio of 13. Now, I'm going to real quickly talk about earnings yield before I go on. That means that if you bought AbbV today at this low P-E ratio, with an expected growth rate, by the way, of 15.6%, your earnings yield would be 8.3% for fiscal year 2018. That's significantly above the 6.67%. But because of the growth, look how that earnings yield increases. By 2027, you would theoretically, assuming that this company grew that fast for that many years, and that's a big, strong assumption, you'd have an earnings yield of 26%. That would be significant compensation. In other words, your return on invested capital would be generating 26% returns by the 10th year if this were to come to pass. That's really the significance of the P-E ratio of 15. It's not the number itself, it's the earnings yield. So let's quickly go through several other examples. Let's go to Amgen, one of the world's largest biotech companies. Once again, we have a P-E ratio of 15. What I want you to notice here is that for all these years, the P-E ratio was much higher, but I want you to notice when the P-E ratios were significantly above 15, in some cases dramatically above, the company was a very poor investment for many years. Here we're going out seven, eight, or nine years or so, and you've got a negative rate of return. You had actually lost 23% of your money, yet when the stock was trading at a P-E ratio of 15, even though it got undervalued during the Great Recession, you would have ended up making a very attractive rate of return of 13% a year. But once again, notice how the company's stock price in the real world, this is absolute history now, correlates very closely to that 15 P-E ratio. Let's move on. Let's go to AutoNation. This is an interesting one because of the cyclicality. Once again, you can see the price vacillates occasionally from the P-E of 15. That's the valuation of this orange line. Anywhere I touch it, it's a P-E ratio of 15. But note how when it's above that, it's a poor time to be buying the stock. And when the P-E ratio gets below 15, those tend to be very excellent times, at least for the short to intermediate term, to buy the stock. Of course, the other effect is what happens to the earnings after you buy the stock. Buy that at 15 P-E and get good earnings growth and you generate very strong rates of return. Buy it at a 15 P-E and earnings fall, you get very poor rates of return. But the 15 still be becomes a great standard for fair value. Now here's B&G Foods Company, and I chose this one on purpose. I still have that 15 PE metaphor, and the company's price tracked that very closely up through 2011. And then once again, it got very overpriced. And when it was in these high valuation periods, when the PEs were very high and the earnings yields were in the 2-3% range, they were times when the company did very poorly. It's currently back to a blended PE ratio of 14, which would indicate that it might be worth taking a closer look at. That's the real impetus 
of the P-E ratio of 15. Here's Bank of Montreal. Now I chose this for a specific reason. You can see the 15 P-E ratio correlation is still there. However, in this case, I'm going to add the normal P-E. It would actually be lower. In other words, once I saw this graph, if I was considering the Bank of Montreal as an investment, this is the New York Stock Exchange version in US dollars, I would be looking at an 11 or 12 PE. So if it was above that, even in this case, I would, even if it was at 15, I would probably be reticent, although there were times when it was. The point is, it is at least telling me when I look at a PE ratio of 15 or less, that I've got an opportunity to buy something at fair value. Here's Borg Warner. Again, a clear tracking of the PE ratio of 15, the orange line on the graph. When it gets above that, it corrects back. When it gets significantly above it, it corrects back. When it gets below it, it comes back into alignment. P-E ratio of 15, representing a 6.7% earnings yield, is a great standard for fair value. Crown core conceal, once again, we see this profound relationship and we see clear periods where it gets disconnected from that fair value and we see what always happens. Historically, the company goes back into alignment. Now, I picked this stock on purpose because this is Echolab. There are exceptions to every rule. I have the orange line here as a 15 P-E ratio. The company has an earnings growth rate of 11%, but I want you to notice the market has always valued this stock at a high PE in the mid-20s, but I've never owned this stock for that reason because I consider the valuation excessive. But once again, I still have a high correlation with some rational valuation level. In this case, it would be an exception to the rule. So as I said in the article, it's not a perfect fit. Here's FedEx Corporation, the one that I actually showcased in the article. Once again, you see how the stock price tracks this 15 PE. So if you're seeing this stock at a 15 PE like it is today, more or less, that's a good time to be looking at it. Might be a good time to research it further because you know you're buying it at fair value. If I look at Omnicom Corporation, this is another interesting example. Once again, we have a 15 P.E. ratio with an 8.9% growth rate. We see when the P.E. ratio got significantly above that, led to period of very poor, a long extended period of very poor investment. We can see when the P.E. was higher, it always ended up reverting back to the normal P.E. And now we have it at a 12.9 P.E., which gives us, by the way, a very strong 8% current earnings yield, which would tell me that this stock is worthy of spending more time because the valuation makes economic sense today. Oracle, a tech stock, of course, we had the crazy valuations that went during the tech bubble. We saw it revert back to the P-E ratio of, in this case, 15.8, which is equal to the company's growth rate. But again, it's still approximately that 15 P-E, and we see how clearly that was a profound valuation reference for Oracle over all these years. Here's Penske automotive group. Once again, we see stock price track the PE of 15. When it gets disconnected, it inevitably comes back into alignment. It's a simple notion, and I'm showing lots of examples simply to make the case that it is a fair valuation reference that you can utilize quite effectively and efficiently to determine very quickly whether you should waste your time looking or researching a stock more thoroughly, or even more importantly, whether you should take the risk of investing in it or not. And once again, you see PN and see financial price follows earnings. Here's Rider Systems. It's a lot more cyclical than most I've shown you, but again, you see the relevance of this 15 PE ratio. The price, you know, relates to that 15 PE ratio and the stock price goes where the earnings go in the long run, but they do it at this 15 PE level. Here's Ralph Lauren, and I showed this example because it clearly shows what can happen. This was an extended period of time of excessive valuation, and that didn't lead to an immediate drop in the price, I want you to notice. And that's obviously significantly above the 15 PE, but it did lead to a lot of volatility and relatively anemic performance for three years here. And then once we had a minor turn down in the earnings, that instigated a significant drop in value. And then, of course, as earnings continued to fall, the valuation continued to fall. But interestingly, it also ends up tracking that 15 PE ratio once again. And I would consider it 
overvalued today with a 22 point, almost a 22 blended PE. That gets me down to an earnings yield of only 4.3%, significantly below my threshold of 6.67. Here's Salmon Corporation, another interesting story. You had the tech bubble. This is an electronic manufacturing company. It ended up reverting back to that 15 PE, and then look how it tracked a 15 PE for all these years following that. Sherwin Williams, I want to show, and this will be my last entry here in this video because I wanted to make another point. We can see that Sherwin Williams stock price tracked a 15 PE ratio very closely during these years when the company was growing at about eight and a half percent. You can see the orange line is a PE of 15. But I want you to notice something. When I bring this graph back out to the long-term graph, you can see that a couple of things have happened. For many years now, the price has exceeded that 15 PE ratio. But I also want you to notice that the earnings growth has accelerated. So at this point, what happens is when you see a strong earnings growth rate like that, you end up with a price earnings ratio equal to the company's growth rate, as I alluded to in the written portion of the article. So here, when you see growth of this magnitude, even though the current earnings yield might be low, the future earnings yield is very, very high because the company is growing very rapidly. If I get down here to this table and you look at when it was low, when the earnings yield was under 4%, but you can see that it grows very rapidly. But my point is, here's a case where you now the orange line is a PE ratio of 20, not 15, which would be a pretty fair value for this stock over the last five or six years because its earnings growth has achieved that. However, you're all, since you're only buying the future when you look longer term, earnings growth is expected to drop to about 14%, which would then get you back to that normal valuation of 15. So this has been Chuck Carnival saying, I hope you got some perspective here of how relevant the 15 PE ratio is. It's not perfect, but it does work in the long run. If you liked what you saw here with Fast Graphs, you can contact us by email at www.fastgraphs.com or call us on the number on the screen here. Thanks for watching and I hope you got some good benefit out of this particular presentation on the relevance of the 15 PE ratio.